<laughs> Shortly afterwards, Paul's patience snapped. On July the 29th, it was reported that he'd filed for divorce. It made for a new round of damaging headlines. He is said to have said that she was rude and arrogant and dismissive with his staff. She has implied that he was mean and controlling. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, came a divorce petition served on Heather. I think she feels furious that uh, she wasn't the instigator of this separation and then divorce. I think she's deeply shocked by it and angry. And within a week, August the 6th, the Sunday Mirror's front page said it all. The propaganda war was in full cry. A letter from Paul's lawyers to Heather had been leaked once again to journalist Ben Todd. You knew that it was such a low ebb now and that it was, all, it was basically all at war. They just hate each other. <laughs> and now they'll stop at nothing. Nothing to tear each other apart. Nothing. Nothing. It had the lot. The missing million pounds from the McCartney's joint account. An account that Paul subsequently had frozen. Plus the mystery disappearance of some cleaning fluid. Three half-filled bottles had gone missing from Paul Sussex estate. Heather's nanny had borrowed them and left a note to say so. But it was enough to get the lawyers going. Three or four days later, there's a legal, a half-page legal letter from Sir Paul's lawyers saying, what are you doing? What gave you any right? You've upset. You've upset um, the housekeeper at Peace Marsh. Maybe, maybe this would back up her, um, her stories that, that he was mean and awful to her. And this does not make him look good. A man with 850 million quid in the bank, belly aching about three bottles of cleaning fluid. You realise we've now hit, hit a rock bottom here. So Heather started her fight back. She employed the services of X editor of both Hello and the News of the World, uh, one Phil Hall. Um, you can see the change. Well, this is, this is Heather fighting back. This is Heather in the Daily Mirror, August the 8th, um, when she's been shut out of the matrimonial home. The Mirror reported how Heather had arrived in St John's Wood to find the locks had been changed. She was furious, allegedly. Police were called when her minder started scaling the wall. It was spun by certain newspapers in such a way that she was made to look a, um, a victim more than anything else. And, um, you know, understandably, you felt sorry for her. The Mirror's scoop carried an unnamed eyewitness account of a fuming and humiliated Heather. With seven colour photos across pages one and three, the paparazzi's time hadn't been wasted. Someone in, in her organisation um, would have tipped off a newspaper, probably first call. Um, newspaper would have tipped off paparazzi agencies, pretty much. She got dressed up for it, she'd done her makeup. She posed on a doorstep, making a scene out of it, so I, there's a chance it was posed. You can guarantee that anything she does and anything that happens to her and anything that we see and that we're allowed to see, it's because she wants us to see it. Interestingly, the Sunday Mirror of August the 6th had reported that Paul had already changed the locks at St John's Wood so Heather couldn't get in. But this lockout happened the very next day, on Monday, August the 7th. Phil Hall, Heather's PR advisor, told us that the difference was that this time Paul had changed the gate locks. Any suggestion that the photos were staged is wrong and naive, said Mr Hall. The Mirror Page One splash of August the 8th meant Heather had scored her first big PR victory at Paul's expense. He's coming out of this looking very bad and very tacky and very spiteful and vindictive. It's a jug of woe. In the McCartney versus McCartney divorce, Heather's PR team had one main task transform the woman the tabloids call Lady Mucker into a more sympathetic figure. So let's start with how she looks. Her hair's much straighter, gone are the sort of soft, tasseled looks, and thank goodness, the 80s perm, but in its place is a very strong, stark hairstyle. And she's lost, I don't know, but must be about a stone in weight. She looks emaciated and terribly thin. 
she's looking pale and wan and she's looking devastated and lonely and isolated. Her public image has very much shifted from the gold digger that she was branded in recent years to the victim. So if people, if people buy into that, her publicity machine have done their job. On August the 16th, Heather was looking like the victim again. The Daily Mirror had exclusive photos of Heather collecting daughter Beatrice from a hotel because Paul wouldn't let her helicopter land on his Sussex estate. But once again, this was a new version of an old story that had appeared in that Sunday Mirror of August the 6th, which revealed that Paul had banned Heather's helicopter from his land. Ten days later, this new version coincided with news that Heather was issuing her own divorce petition. She has cross-petitioned on the grounds of his unreasonable behaviour. So there's a two-pronged attack from both parties against each other, using other people to speak to the media. So we have a two-sided battle here. Very few people must have been involved in that operation, and yet somehow it ended up on the front page of a newspaper. One of the people who made sure it made page one was Darren Lyons, boss of paparazzi agency Big Pictures, who'd received a tip-off. Yeah, Heather knew that the, the press were there. It wasn't only us, there was a Daily Mirror photographer as well, which could have been tipped off by her camp. So she seems to be using that as a little bit of a mouthpiece on her behalf. We had the information from a totally separate independent source and it made for fantastic pictures, as you can see, you know, splashed all across the front. You can do things privately if you want to. And, um, you know, see, Paul McCartney is going about his business very privately at the moment. Uh, we're not seeing his distress, we're not seeing his devastation. He's kept well out of the way. Um, I think if Heather wanted to do it that way, she could. I don't think she wants to do it that way. Later that day, Heather headed for America, and so did Paul. The paparazzi caught him en route to New York. She was caught on her way to L.A., and there was no doubt who got the most coverage. There's probably 20 or 30 photographers around her at this stage. I mean, she's milking it, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, but you would do in this situation. She needs the, she needs the publicity. Nice top two for the tabloids. When you've got a great set of breasts like that, that's great for a tabloid newspaper. So that's going to get her in the paper straight away. It's simple. It's part of image. It's part of PR. But the pictures needed a story. What better than Heather's home video? She's only collecting evidence of paparazzi harassment, says Phil Hall. But with sister Fiona filming Heather, Heather filming the paparazzi, and the paparazzi filming Heather, the circus had well and truly come to town. The video diaries are the subject of much debate. I mean, whatever. Uh, her video camera is an omnipresent accessory um, and has been for, for a while. Whatever's happening to her, she's taking a video of it. And if she's not taking a video of it, her sister, Fiona, is taking a video of her doing whatever she's doing. Now, I don't know why she's doing that. Is she doing because she's making a film? Is she doing a documentary? She was filming away at Live a, a year ago. Is it for her divorce lawyers? What's it about? Whatever it's about, while Heather was in America, she was still making front-page news in Britain. The prospect of Heather's own video diary was seen as a warning shot to Paul. Imagine the message that that would have sent to the other side and the shivers that would have gone down certain spines. Certainly if you were, you know, on Sir Paul's side, you, you know, you might be a bit... You'd take note anyway. The propaganda war has even extended to the choice of lawyers. On July the 16th, it was announced that Paul was engaging Fiona Shackleton, who represented Prince Charles. 24 days later, Heather responded by engaging Anthony Julius, who'd represented Princess Di. It's slightly ironic, isn't it, that the King and Queen of Pop have got the same lawyers as the King and Queen of Our Hearts, uh, Princess uh, Di and uh, Prince Charles. But in reality, the reason is that there are probably only half a dozen lawyers in London that have got the technical capabilities of doing a divorce where there's so much wealth and so much complexity in the wealth. And so much publicity. Our research shows that since the separation, there have been twice as many stories about Heather than Paul. Plus, 216 pictures of her in the tabloids compared to 165 of him. But in law, the propaganda war is likely to be viewed for exactly what it is, about image, not reality. 
You get this ridiculous situation where both sides to the marriage both employ PR agencies who are both spinning for all their worth stories into the media saying he did this, she did that. I suspect that the courts will have very little truck, won't take any notice of that. They'll say Heather Mills McCartney is entitled to, the child is entitled to, and they will make an award. And that award will be bigger than I think Sir Paul will want to pay. That is, of course, if it ever gets to court. Meanwhile, McCartney versus McCartney, the split that went spinning out of control. Even the settlement gets sexed up. What she's after is as much as she can possibly get. At one point, she was offered, I believe, it is 30, 30 million. Well, you know, it's better than a slap in the face with a wet fish. She threw the 30 million back in his face. Anything up to 50 million. I should think she's probably after 100 million. Could she get 100 million? Heather, if she pushes it, could get up to 100 million. I don't think I'll admire her at the end of the day if she walks away with, you know, 100 million quid, because I think that's wrong. Probably 200 million in her mind.